Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is an unboxing and review video for Hexa, the advanced hexapod robot. Now this is a paid review, but all my opinions are my own and I'm gonna make it quite factual so you can make up your own mind about the product. So this product is available to purchase now. Have a look at the link in the description to the video and it ships in December. Right, let's see what's in the box. So inside the box we have a manual that says hello human on it and under that we have the robot itself which is actually much bigger than I imagined it when I heard about this product. Right so let's take that out of there and we've also got what appears to be a wireless charging station and we've got a mains lead Yes, with the UK plug on, which is pretty good. And here it is. So uh, measuring the diameter of this, it's yeah about 15 to 16 inches across with the legs bent. The legs I can unfold and um, obviously they move in all directions. So it becomes much bigger. Now, the other thing I notice is the top just lifts off here and we've got a number of interfaces inside. So inside there, it looks like some jack sockets, some sort of multi IO pin expansion thing and a USB connector. Also, the top of this turns around as well, so there's another motor there. Here's a couple of pages from the manual, which seems pretty in-depth. There's a pretty thick manual. Um, on this page here, we've got what all of those pins are. So we've got some GPIO, 5 volt with ADC, uh, 5 volt and ground pins. We've got SCL and SDA, which are I2C pins. 3.3 volts, another ground pin. USB 2, and these jacks appear to be for audio in and out. The next thing to do is get the app from this QR code, but while I'm doing that, I'm gonna pop it on its charger base and see what it does. So the manual doesn't actually say to charge before the first use, so it probably comes charged, but I'm just gonna pop that on there and see what happens to check it's working. So it went beep, and the light has come on on the charger base, so that looks pretty good. And we can also plug the cable straight in for charging, and we get the red light come on there for charging. Now cable charging is about two and a half hours for flat, and wireless is about four and a half hours according to the manual. Right, I've now got the Hexa app installed on my phone, and the only thing I found I had to do on Android was enable the permission for location, in order that the app could see the Wi-Fi hotspots and could connect to Hexa. And uh, basically there's a bunch of settings. You can have direct mode or you can have Wi-Fi mode. So you can actually control Hexa over the internet like an IoT device, or you can link directly to it and control it so you don't need to have Wi-Fi, but you do need to have the Wi-Fi or internet access to set it up in the first place. So if we now go to explore, and we should see pretty soon that uh, some video appears, which is from the display and we can scroll that round and Hexa's head will turn and actually show us uh, what it can see and that works over the internet as well. So now in its basic mode of operation we can drive Hexa around and whichever way I point the head becomes forwards so I'm just going to point it over this way and we're going to walk forwards and of course it goes in the direction of the head and as I turn the head um, it'll follow the head round there whichever way we want. We can also make it crab sideways and back the other way and of course walk backwards. If again, if I turn that head round, backwards becomes a different direction and it can walk in, uh, in any direction it wants to there. That's a normal walking mode. We've also got March, where it will go uh, with much bigger steps. But pretty much I can raise and lower the height so I can uh, make it go right down and crawl along the ground. Or I can raise it right up onto its tiptoes and then make it walk. Obviously the stride isn't quite as big and it's uh, a bit more effort for it to move the legs, but then it can actually do that, which is pretty good. We have various other little things in this little app, which uh, includes saying hello. So it can wave. It can also raise its right and left hand. And we can do various other little things like that. There is a way of climbing a staircase as well, where it will try and reach up. but I don't have a staircase, so it's gonna fall over. And the things on this screen are referred to as skills, and you can populate them with more from the store or write your own, but there's another one installed for now called Dance. So you need to put some music on for this app, and there's various options within the app and things you can press on the screen that make it do different moves. So this has been written like any other skill with the open source software developer framework and we're going to look at that in a minute.
but it's a pretty good demo of how agile it is. So the important thing here is uh, mainly about this product is that there's actually an SDK which is open source and this means we can control any of the hardware of the robot including all of those um, expansion pins and we can also control the robot over the network and take control of any of that stuff. So I'm going to have a go at writing a little application. So I'm doing development under Windows and there's some quite good documentation on documentation.vincross.com about exactly what you need to do. For Windows you need to install Docker and you need to install Oracle VirtualBox. You can develop under Mac OS X and of course Linux as well and the documentation here takes you through step by step what to install and what to do. So uh, the first thing you get is basically making a blank skill. I'm moving on a little bit to the sensor walk skill uh, which will read the sensor and make the robot walk. But first of all I've just taken the very basic lines of code to show you the basic functionality and I'm coding that in Atom and the programming language is a language called Go. And all I've done is added in my framework skill, my framework driver's hex body and on start I've said to start and to stand and obviously on close we've got close. So if I now go in and type mind run it should upload and run that on the robot. Now I've already built and packed my package which is just a case of typing mind build and mind pack. So hopefully once this is uploaded, we should see the robot do something. That is uploaded and now it's installed and we should see the robot stand up. And if I quit from that, it should sit down again. So I've now gone and fleshed out the rest of the code, including importing math and time and various other things. The main thing is this for loop, which basically makes the robot look for the distance with its distance center and walk towards it. If it detects a distance less than 500, which is half a meter, then it'll stop, relax for two seconds, switch its head round by 180 degrees, and go and do that in the other direction and repeat until I quit. So off it goes, and if I stick something in front of that sensor, it should stop and relax for two seconds, switch its head round 180 degrees, and off it goes in the other direction. And of course this is installed over the network from my desktop PC, the mobile app is not involved. And we've got complete control of the hardware. So it'd be really good to write something a bit more complicated though. So I'm just going to quickly go through the API for the hardware. There's various other uh, things we can interface here. So we can interface with the accelerometer in it to read its uh, pan and tilt. There's analog to digital converter in there so we can read analog voltages from your own sensors. Uh, audio, we can read and write uh, basically an audio file in raw bit form so we can record audio and play it back. Distance we've already looked at, which is the IR sensor on the front. Uh, GPIO are digital pins, either reading or writing from, I think it's three digital pins. Hex body is the main driver, which will um, actually control all those joints. So we can look at each individual joint, either a leg or a joint, or we can move all of the legs, or we can sort of walk um, and loads of different things. We can set the gate there for different types of walking. So this one's actually got lots and lots of functions in it. We can also talk to I squared C devices. We've got infrared there, so you can send and receive, I believe, infrared data from the IR sensors on the front. And we've got media, which I think is for the camera. So uh, basically we can take a picture and you can also integrate OpenCV with this to do image recognition. So we've also got some network stuff. We've got some JavaScript methods so you can send data uh, between Hexa and your device to write a mobile app and those sorts of things. We could probably get the robots to talk to each other if we have more than one, but I've only got one so I can't test that out. So also Vincross have helpfully published the CAD for the body shell and parts of the legs. So you can actually modify these, they're uh, solid models and you can make your own custom parts and print your own. So I decided that Hexa needs some eyeballs, so I've used the same mounting CAD here, but drawn my entirely new assembly for the top, and we're going to stick a servo in the back and have these eyeballs so they can look around. So there are my eyes mounted, they can swivel this way and then there's a servo at the back which is going to move them and this is the same mounting as the hexa body shell. So I've now attached two levers which means when the servo turns it moves the eyes and they look left and right. 
So on the back of that's an Arduino Pro Mini, which I'm going to interface with Hexa. Now I probably could interface the servo directly with Hexa, but I'd have to bang my own PWM out of the controller. And it's much easier just to interface with digital pins and use the Arduino for now to control the actual servo. So I have that fitted to where the head shell would go on the same mounting holes there, which go straight in. I've got my Arduino mounted and some wires that go off for 5 volts for power and the GPIO pins, all three of them. And now I need to write some code to interface the eyes so we can make them move as Hexa walks around. My Arduino code for this is pretty simple, it's just using three digital pins and one servo and basically I'm doing digital reads and depending on the state of the pins it's moving the servo to different positions. And I've just edited my loop here so that basically we've got these boolean values true, false and true which are output to the three GPIOs on Hexa and essentially it moves the eyes, waits for one second, moves them so it looks around and then what I've done with the direction, instead of switching direction every time it just adds 45 degrees to it so it should continually search round for the longest distance looking with its eyes as it goes and then walk towards it so you can see there it's walking towards me and seeing an object so it's turning around and each time the head turns 45 degrees and you should be able to see the eyes looking around there which is just scripted and off it goes and obviously you can add many more hardware interfaces, either things you build yourself and other peripherals to those GPIOs, or you could put extra sensing on the analog ins to do various things. Alright, so that's the end of the video. Don't forget to check out the Vincross website for information on the SDK. There's also something called Hexa Simulator that you can download and play with a virtual Hexa if you haven't got the real hardware. So as I say, the product's available to purchase now and it's going to ship in December. Check out the link in the description to this video. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates on robot projects and some reviews on other robot products. Alright, that's all for now.